<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. I am now in Adana, Turkey, and uh, it's a summer day here today uh, because we are closer to the sea. And um, today I will be talking with a friend of mine, Rukube Kasanga, and um, he will be talking about how he approaches three issues pertaining to the Ukraine-Russian war, conflict, military operation, invasion. I have to say it in that way because we all come from different countries and all our countries have a different perspective on what's actually happening there. Uh, because let's remember, this is YouTube, this is a global platform. There are people from all over the world on this platform, so we all don't necessarily get the same news and we, are, we all, all our countries don't necessarily uh, have the same views concerning what is happening here. So let's please keep that in mind when you are viewing this, this video. Okay, and so what he will be doing is he will be approaching these three issues. He will do so by applying critical reasoning. So Rukube, I would like you to just introduce yourself and let people know what you do. Okay, my name is Rukube Kasanga and I'm, and I'm in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania as we speak. And I am here uh, with Celeste. Thank you very much for inviting me on this episode. We've had a few now once, I think this is the third one, right? And yeah, so we're so. talking about critical reasoning in respect to, in respect to um, what's happening in, in, in Ukraine. The, the, so, I'll, we will be discussed. There appears to be a conflict. There appears to be a misunderstanding. I haven't been there myself, you know, so I'm receiving this information from the media and I'm trying to make sense, uh, make sense out of it. And I believe many of you are also trying to make sense out of it. I, um, I, I teach critical reasoning. I've got my, my students and I apply it in my life. I sometimes apply it consciously. Sometimes I do it without even knowing. Okay. Oh. Okay, I will be using or let's say applying the skills on how I would, one would approach uh, the information coming from the media. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's our gateway of getting information. So when the information comes to us, we, we consume the information. So how do we make sure we are getting the, how do we make sure that we are believing what is true and living what is false? So I'll be applying my critical reasoning skills to getting closer to the truth. Okay, so that's fantastic, absolutely fantastic, yeah. right? Yeah. So the first thing that we're gonna, which I would like for you to explain about when you apply critical uh, reasoning to this is um, the justification for Russia's so-called, so and then you in inverted commas, special military operation. Yeah. For so instance, before you... I die, okay. So before I dive into that question, I'd like first to make it clear that what is happening in Ukraine is inhumane. No life should be wasted, and we are not support. I am not supporting either side. Okay. But um, I, you know, they should reach a compromise, and you know, life should go on as usual. And yeah. So, and your question was um, the, just, the justification for Russia's so-called special military operation. Okay, okay. I would, I, would, I would like to reiterate, to restate that I'm in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and I'm getting all this information from the news media. I've been there myself. I'm just like you, an individual. I, have, I don't have much resources as the governments do have. And what I'm hearing is that uh, Russia has, the Russian troops are in Ukraine, and there is a war between the, the Ukraine troops and the Russian troops. What the Russians are saying, they are doing a special military operation, which according to them, it appears that the government in place is being unfair to the Russians living in, in, in Ukraine. So they are doing this operation apparently to make sure that the Russians in, uh, in, in, in Ukraine uh, are live in peace. And they also appear to be a security phenomenal that is disturbing the Russians, that they don't want the, the Ukraines to join the, uh, the NATO. So these two things appears to be the reasons why um, Russia is having this so-called uh, military special military operation in Ukraine. Now, is it justified? 
You know, that's the question. That's the, that's the claim. They are claiming they are doing this. But we should ask ourselves, is it justified? What are the reasons, you know? But then coming from an individual like me or you who have, don't have much resources to get closer to the truth, what we are relying on is the information we get from the media. Now, if you ask me, is it justified? I don't know. I have done as much research as possible, but the information I'm getting is not really giving me uh, proper truth. So it's hopeless, you know, it's hopeless. Again, and I'm saying that because I'm seeing people's lives are being lost. So that is, to me, that is the weighing balance. Is it justified to lose people's lives because of this claim? And then is this claim justified? And when I say a claim, I mean that. A claim is what someone is trying you to believe that there is war, there's a conflict. And therefore we have to attack. That is the claim. And the justification for the attack is one of our people are being, being unfairly treated. So the claim here is what you need to ask yourself. Is it, is it true what this person is saying? Now you, you go further and ask yourself, what are the reasons supporting this claim? What you are hearing, you should be skeptical. And the approach here I would use is being skeptical. You should ask as many questions as possible. You should not believe things at, at best value. And also the language being used, you've got to be very aware of it. Like, you see what I'm saying? I'm saying you should be skeptical. I'm not saying you must be skeptical. If I say you must be skeptical, that means something completely different from being, you must be skeptical from making sense. So the Russians apparently have gone to the Ukraine territory and there is war going on between these two troops. And their reasons being, Russians are being mistreated and there's a security phenomenon. Now, these are the reasons. Now, is this true? Are these reasons true to justify this special military of theirs in Russia? Now, you've got to ask yourself, is it true that Russians are being mistreated? <laughs> now, how can you get closer to the truth? Have you been to Ukraine? What are the Russians saying in Ukraine? What is, what is the Ukraine government saying about this thing? So you should ask us, should be skeptical, not just believing what they're saying. Now, there's security, there's this security phenomenon that apparently the Russians are saying, if it appears that Ukraine wants to get closer to, to, to NATO, they want to join NATO, now that becomes their issue, that they mustn't join NATO. Now, is it Russians' place to say why they shouldn't join NATO? Ukraine, the sovereign country. Now, so the issue of uh, security that uh, Ukraine mustn't join NATO, it feels like Russia is imposing something on the, um, on the Ukraine. And that is against the, the sovereign right of the Ukraine. So again, this reason, you look at it, you ask yourself, does it make sense? If it goes to a point whereby it does make sense to you, yeah, that's, then the claim becomes, becomes sound or probably stronger. So that's my view on, 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 on Russians' uh, activities in, 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 in Ukraine, that one must look at the claim and ask yourself, what are the reasons that Russia is giving to support their claim? Now, once you get those reasons, you go back and information as possible to eventually come to a conclusion that is this justified. Now, okay. there's something I want to say there. Sorry. There's something I want to say there. Something I want to say there. Now, in critical reasoning, the thing is, you now in in situation like this, the information that you're receiving today might be different from tomorrow, mm. because you don't have all the facts. You don't have all the truth. Now, be willing to change your position once more stronger in I mean more more strong facts or information comes to comes into light. I'd like to point that out. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm understanding from this, like, let's say if I'm your student, I like what you said at the end, the part where mm. as the facts come in, you might change your position. Because that is so true. Yeah. Because, because mm. this is something that just didn't just happen on the February the 24th. It's things that have occurred before. Mm. So maybe mm. like I might only know something a few facts from that happened since February 24th, but 
but then suddenly I mm. learned something about something that happened in 2016 or okay, and then it, I might change. Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is, mm. I would think is very sound and very critical. And then also like when you said about the justification, um, like uh, the claims that Russia made about why they are invading, uh, again, also that has to be looked at and how we are getting information from the media because some countries are getting all, some are getting none, some are getting some of it because there's a lot of bias. We are lucky, I think we are in Africa, we tend to be able to, but I'm now in Turkey, which is even better for me. I'm even getting more. And then also because you might be getting in your language that we don't get in the English language, you know, because you have your own, your own network that's um, giving out news in Swahili. And of course they would have, uh, very Tanzanian perspective, which is different from a BBC perspective or a CNN example perspective, or the Indian, uh, what is the Indian channel? I think it's uh, Republic, you know? So, yeah, so I think, uh, but um, what I'm gonna do is, this video I'm doing with Rukube, after this one, uh, I will do one where everything he has said, I will sit and, and apply it and do it with, with my audience. Okay, so thanks, Rukube, for that, um, that first uh, answer there to that kind of question. So the next question here would be, um, or not question, but the next issue is um, the claims against Ukrainian government actions towards the Russian minorities in the likes of the Donbass region. Mm. So mm. how would you approach that? How would I approach that? Again, before I answer your question, I'd like to make this point. I am receiving information. I am receiving information from the media that this is happening. This means that minorities in Russia, I mean, in Ukraine are being unfairly treated by the, Russian, right. by the Ukraine government, right? That's what I'm receiving. Now, mind you, you've got to be aware that sometimes the media houses can, can pick sides and they can shape the narrative. Now, all, all they're saying is that all, um, all, all you could be hearing is that is this happening, but is this true? That's, that's the question. And then and the source of information that you're receiving, the source of information, is it credible source of information? Do they have integrity? Do they have, uh, do they have integrity? Now, unfortunately, from my understanding, that's not how it works. The media houses tend to pick sides. They have the narrative and they have their own agenda behind the scenes. So um, it's a hopeless, it's a hopeless thing. It's hopeless because getting to the bottom of it is just you know, almost impossible. Now, if true, so I'm gonna make an assumption here. If true, the Ukraine government is unfairly treating the Russian minorities in Ukraine, and then something has to be triggered. We have to understand how are they mistreating them? Is it genocide or not genocide? If it's genocide, then the international, the international uh, community has to interfere. If it hasn't gone to that level of uh, genocide, then it's, it's up to the, the Ukraine government to deal with it. Am I making sense there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But so, so the defining factor, is it genocide or not? As far from a, so we've got to establish, is it genocide or not? If not, then the Ukraine government has the right to deal with what's happening within its territory. Now, my suspicion is it's almost impossible. So making an assumption, if true, that's genocide, then it's, it's, it justifies uh, the international community stopping the genocide from happening. And this could be the UN, uh, it could be the UN actually, it should be the UN organizing other countries to step in. Now, if that were true, what's happening has happened, as it justifies Russians' actions in stopping their people from being, you know, being mistreated. And if not, then it's up to the Ukrainian government to do what they're meant to do within their own territories. The tricky thing is how, how skills do you apply to get closer to the truth? What 
Mm -hmm. Who is meant to justify that this is a matter of genocide or not? Of course, the proposition has got to highlight that whenever this happens, the UN steps in. So if that is a principle, then it should apply if truly there's genocide going on. So if the principle says that whenever there is genocide, the UN should intervene and to stop it as a matter of principle. And if the UN did not intervene, does it give the right to the Russians to intervene? You know, so it's a matter of step by step. But as an, as an individual, you don't have the luxury to get positive these truths. Mm -hmm. That's why some people say it's up to the government. To, that's why some people say it's up to the people who are actively involved in this conflict to decide what to do next. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. If you ask me, I believe the truth is in the cabinet, American cabinets or the secret cabinets. I mean, this, the, 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 the central government, the cabinets, I believe they know the truth. Mm -hmm. And they believe they can act on the truth, allow them to get closer to the truth, to justify is there unfairly treatment going on in Ukraine or not? But the principle is the principle doesn't care. The principle is clear. If there's genocide, these are the steps. If mm -hmm. there's no genocide, these are the steps. That's very clear. It's only the truth that determines what should happen next. Unfortunately, me and you as individuals don't have the luxury of getting closer to the truth. We can get, but not to the entire truth. So you know, as much as you research, it helps you to grasp the idea and what is happening. But I, even though you can easily be misdirected because you are consumers from the media houses who seem to have an agenda, I tend to consume most of the Western media uh, information from the Western media. I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't very much get from the other sources. So my, but I, I keep on trying to get this information. But unfortunately, the algorithm on my computer here or, or my on my search engine, it gives me information of the world. So, but again, I'm conscious enough to know this is happening so I can filter the information and find out, you know, at, at least try to put a balance to what I am receiving. Mm -hmm. you know, for some people who don't have these skills, they can end up believing everything they, they get that is presented to them in, at, at face value. So my advice, be skeptical, you know, uh, verify information from different sources that will give you the luck, that, that will allow you to get closer to the truth. Right. I'm making sense? Yes. One should be and verify, one should seek information from different sources. In doing so, you are likely to get a better chance of getting because of the truth. Will you get, right. the, you get the complete truth? I don't know. But on that regard, I think the government, those who are actively involved, they have the truth. Now it's up to them to decide what next. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then talking about, like you say, resources. So that's and about um, people not maybe not getting enough resources. Now that is why I also like to do these videos because I don't mind doing the research, looking for alternative resources. Yeah, so that's why with, with my channel, I'm trying to, 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 because a lot of people don't have time or they don't have the inclination to go and search for sources. Now I have a lot of time because I mean, you know me, I don't do anything. I just travel the world. So I've got time to do this. So what I've done is like, just to go back to the first one about whether it's a war, a conflict, military operation, invasion. Um, I will link below this. There is a guy called, I'm just saying a guy, I can't remember what he's, he's an ex-general or something. His name is Scott Ritter. And he, he's, um, I didn't, I can't remember what he is, but he's something with the UN. He was with the military, the, the, the US military. He was, he's a very big, big, big dude in the, the military complex. And he is very good in battlefield strategy. So he has outlined exactly how this thing that Russia is doing, how it, how it works. So when you watch what he says, you can immediately see whether it's a military operation 
or whether it started as a military operation then went into an invasion or whether it's a war because the way it is laid out so i'm not going to say what it is because people can go and watch the video of him talking about this then coming to this of the the, the genocide and anyway, whatever's been happening to the Russian, it's not necessary. We see the thing with Ukraine is some people say they are Ukrainian and some say they are Russian. So that's already the issue. So like when we, when we say the Ukrainians were oppressing or ill-treating the Russians, it's a bit weird because they are all supposed to be Ukrainians or, but so, so it's mainly they were, it was more a claim that they were ill-treating the pro-Russians anyone who was pro-Russia, who had still felt ties to Russia, which I mean, makes sense because they were all under USSR before. You know, so it's kind of like, anyway, but I have a few, I will link a few links below. Oh, sorry, the other thing about the invasion conflict, I will also link Putin's speech because actually he's, in his speech, he actually says what he's doing. Okay. And then also, um, so, Concerning to the invasion, blah, 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 about the justification, I, I will link John Mearsheimer's video where he talks about, he's, six years ago, he spoke about this very thing. He said, this is going to happen. It's going to happen if this, this, and this, if Ukraine does this, 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 and the other. Six years ago already, he predicted that this would happen. And not just him, but Biden, everybody, all world leaders in the world knew this would happen. So it's not like it was a secret because of the NATO agreement and the Minsk agreement, which mm. it was known that if Ukraine uh, just honors these two agreements, this was gonna happen. So to them, that's why, like you say, we don't know what goes on in the government. We're just looking at what the media is telling us. The government at their level, they know, they know exactly what's going on. They just mm. don't need to share it with us. We are all here at the bottom making our own conclusions and you know, forming our own. But mm. they know. So they all know, mm. they know what it is. It's just how they are mm. reacting to it that's that's weird. Because they know. They've all known this for years. Okay. Mm. And for the, the humanitarian thing, like you were saying, the 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 claims about genocide and ill treatment, etc., oppression. So I have I will link a few uh documents for those who don't mind to read. 20 pages and what have you of documentation, but from the human rights organization, the OHCHR, which is, uh, what are they? They also some human rights group. And then also I will link three videos, which is easier where they actually take the document and they explain it to you, which is easier if you don't want to read. But the, the UN knows about this they be, they've known about this since 2014 the ill treatment they've known about it they have documented it so has the red cross the ochcr the there's another one which is actually in ukraine they space in ukraine they all know about this why again they're not saying anything about it or they didn't do anything about it again uh, your guess is as good as mine and like you said we are at this level we're not getting in the information up there they know what they are doing yeah so so there are reports about these things. It's just that if you're not going to look for it, you're not going to find it. Okay? That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, and especially if you look at the Minx Agreement, it is even mentioned in the Minx Agreement. You go to the next one. Or do you want to say something first about what I just said? Uh, I want to comment on the, on the language. Mm -hmm. Language being used. Now... And this, I'm approaching this from the critical reason perspective is used to, you know, through language to get information. Now, be mindful of the language, you know, is, you know, there's information in there, there's emotions being passed on, you know, there's these things that are, you know, hidden, but they're there, they're taking effect. Uh, you wanna, you, you'd like to, you know, you know you've got to be, um, Good to be conscious of the language being used. You notice that some call it an invasion, some say special military operation, some say an attack, and, and some refrain from using any word. Like the Chinese don't haven't they, have, they haven't called it an invasion yet. Now you'll realize that an invasion has more implication than an attack or a special military operation. Now, why do you think some parts of the world are using uh, an invasion, some other parts of the world are using 
especially military. Some are saying it's an attack. Now, all these things matter, you know, so beware that you could be manipulated if you're not careful about the language. And this information can be repeated to you most of the times, many times. Ideally, it's going to influence or more probably get you into believing something without you even knowing. It's the propaganda. Now, there's nothing wrong with propaganda. It's, it just depends if the information being propagated, is it true or false? You know, if right, it's true, right. yeah, that's fine. You know, yes, repeat yes, it yeah, as much yeah. as possible. You know, if it's false, then that's something else. But in most cases, it's, it's more about influence. In propaganda, it goes far, not just on, on, on in wars, but even in adverts, the, the, yes, the phones yes. we use, the products we buy. It's all about making you believe that this is the truth. Well, actually, it's not the truth. It's using language and human behavior to make you believe certain things. Now, as you approach this situation in Ukraine, you know, be, be mindful of the language being used. It could be used as a tactic. Right, you know, right. Yeah. Uh, against your understanding of the situation. Yeah. yeah, because even like the word genocide, you know, like, like what happened in, I know we're not talking about this, but like what happened in Bucha, and yeah, Kramatorsk, yeah. like the language that has been thrown around is it was a genocide. And yeah. even Macron had to step back from that and said, hey, let's be careful. Because you see, genocide yeah. is a totally, it's like even with the apartheid, yeah. was it a genocide yeah, or yeah. was it just apartheid? Yeah. You know, so people are yeah. even like agreeing yeah. with invasion, which comes to the next thing yeah. because talking about language and invasions yeah. and mm. sanctions because there's invasions, because you know, it all comes. So the last thing is, is if the economic sanctions against Russia are proportionate considering what US and its allies did to Iraq or just so did in the Middle East and parts of Africa because yeah. they did it in Libya and yeah. Belgium did it in, in the Congo, you know, so mm. yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll, uh, again, I'll go back to the... I would insist that approach these things with skepticism. Don't just believe what you receive, you know, from what from 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 the media or whatever sources you believe, you know, that come with this information. You should be skeptical. You should be asking yourself questions. You should be comparing situations. And from the very beginning, I had been asking myself: Are uh, these sanctions proportionate? You know, what are they basing on? Okay, you know, uh, benefit of the doubt. These sanctions are meant to make Russia uh, stop doing what it's doing in, 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 in Ukraine. Yeah, I myself don't want to see people dying in Ukraine. You know, it's, you know that's loss of people's life. It's unfair people's losing their way of life, having to go to other, you know, being raped. It's, it's not easy. There's nothing good about it. So if there's a way to support, if, again, it's, 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 that, process, it's, it's, the, it's that way being used, the right or wrong, that's sub subjective. Right, but the point here, as you've asked it, considering what happened in Iraq and what's happening in Ukraine now, are these sanctions proportionate? Now, that's something different. We are testing a principle here. The principle here is if there is an invasion, it justifies sanctions. That is the principle. So we have to ask ourselves is this an invasion? An invasion? If yes, then does it amount to sanctions? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? If yes, therefore there should be sanctions. Now, the situation in, in the situation in, 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 in Ukraine, is it an invasion? That's the first question. Now, the first thing is, what does the principle say? If the principle says that whenever there's an invasion that justifies sanctions, then sanctions should be put in place. So that is the principle. Now we go back to the situation happening in Ukraine. Is this an invasion? If yes, does it amount to economic sanctions, whatever it is? If yes, therefore, it should be done. Now, that principle should apply to anyone, not just Russia. But just to Russia, yes. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back now to the situation in Iraq. Did that, was that an invasion? Did it amount to, I mean, to uh, economic sanctions? If yes or no, if yes, then why wasn't there economic sanctions? If if no, then that's fine. So you've got to go back and look. What is an invasion? 
any invasion or an illegal invasion. And mm -hmm. who meant to say that? And now my records are not clear, but I believe Kofi Annan, who was then the UN Secretary General, so, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, Secretary, Kofi Annan, yeah, yeah, he, Kofi Annan, he mentioned that this is an illegal invasion. Right, and it was it was illegal was because no consequences. Yeah, it was illegal because there was no WMDs. Right, there was no weapons of mass yeah. destruction. If they no. just made it up. <laughs> Okay, so the, the question I ask myself, was this the principle back then or did, did it come at some point that now the international law said from now on, whenever this happens, therefore there should be consequences. Again, here I'm testing a principle. The principle that justifies economic <coughs> sanctions based on an illegal invasion. If the principle exists, it should apply regardless. Again, we should ask ourselves, did this principle, was this principle there back in 2003? If it wasn't there, then it's not fair to apply it on the, on the US and its allies, whoever participated in that war. But if the principle was there all along and it was never applied, then that's double standard. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I that's, that's my saying. take. Yeah, yeah that's but also take. the fact that you, can, can invade a country, the legal and illegal should be very important. Yeah. Because I'm sure there are times when it is, it, it, it will have to be legal. Like mm. example, in a, in, 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 in a case of genocide, you know, if the whole of Tanzania is being, being uh, ethnic cleanse, then it would be right for example, South Africa to go in there to, to help. You know what I mean? To some extent, because who's gonna help the people if it's their own government that's ethnic cleansing them? You know, I'm, I'm just using examples. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not, no, I don't wanna start the war between Tanzania yeah, yeah. and South Africa now. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Just making an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, so, so legal and illegal is also very important. It's very important. And, and, and what is the principle? Now, the principle, principle don't just yeah. come from nowhere. It's, it, it comes from an observation. People make observations and then they make a principle. We've made these observations, therefore we create this principle. Mm -hmm. We've noticed, we've observed that on this point, there appears too many, too many accidents. From our observations, we've known that this place or cause many accidents. Therefore, we're gonna introduce this principle to stop this from happening. So the principle applies. So it doesn't come from nowhere. It's based on observation that we've observed mm -hmm. to stop a country from invading another country. Therefore, economic sanctions. This seem to hurt even the most powerful. Mm -hmm. But then how is it applied? That's something else that should be stated in the principle. When this is true, then therefore this should happen. Now, again, at some point, as you say, the international community is going to intervene. So the sovereignty, the sovereignty is there, but it has its limits. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, certain countries haven't signed to these contracts, these treaties. So I don't know how they'll be how abiding is. to them, but you know, yeah. But so yeah. again, the thing is, you've got to ask questions. You've got to ask the right questions to get closer to the truth. Right, right. This is to me. To me, that's the approach. Once you get that information, then you can. Once you get that information, then you can apply that. If you can use critical reasoning skills to create strong arguments or maybe sound arguments that will help you say, okay, this is justified. Mm -hmm. so there's a process here. You go, you go through a process before you actually say this is right or wrong. This is true or false. There's a process that you have to go through first. Most of us have this, what they call confirmation bias. We tend to believe, mm -hmm. wanting to believe what we already want to believe. You know, it's like we have this belief already and we are searching for information that is feeding our belief. Okay, yeah, that's you, also you, true. Not, you, 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 are, you are not helping yourself and getting positive of the truth. It should be, now that's where critical reasoning helps you to use logic to eventually separate the emotions, the facts, the faults, you know, the falseness, you know, it helps you 
eventually coming to term, coming to closer to the truth. So I think people should be mindful of this uh, of this biasness, the skepticism, the, the the skills itself, and you know these other ways of getting closer to the truth. Now, once you get to the truth, you should be willing to accept the truth, mm-hmm. or cautiously apply the truth because right, it might change. Right. To, Again, but but the truth the truth is always there. It's just how close you get to the truth. The truth is always there. It's you know how lucky you are to get close to the truth. But once you get to the truth, then if it against what you believe before, then you know by, by all means you should change your perspective. I mean, you should change your position. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. yeah. And then also emotion because a lot of people also they just go on emotion. Like facts don't don't matter. Narrative and emotion. In the narrative says this is what it is, and then this is how I feel, and then that is what it is. You know, regardless of the fact or the truth. Um, like especially like now with the with trying to to get like like you said in the beginning, the thing is nobody wants to see Ukrainian people die and suffer. We are all we all agree on that, or oh, we think we all do, because there will be those who say that, but yet they will say, but Ukraine shouldn't give up, they should fight to the death. So it's kind of like an oxymoron, because if you care about people not dying, your, you would be, your stance would be more, there should, they should be a peace treaty. They should do whatever it takes to, to see what the what will appease the aggressor without losing anything on their side. And even the way they, they are, they like everyone thinks, well, not everybody, but most people think Ukraine is winning. Because every day I see from the Kiev independent uh, newspaper, they will show the losses of uh, Russian troops and Russian armaments. They never show the losses of Ukraine, Ukrainian troops or, 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 or armaments, only the Russians. So of course, when you look at that, Russia is losing. But for me, as a humanitarian, I'm looking at it's the human life. losses, how many civilians are dying, how many troops are dying, and I'm looking at the infrastructure, because that's all yeah. damaged. I'm looking at how many cities have been captured. I'm mm. looking at how many people had to flee the country. You know what I mean? I'm looking at how they don't have food and water compared to the Russian people. The Russian people, they have homes, food and water, shelter. Nothing is happening to them. So how can Ukraine be winning the war? You see, so I think it's a matter of perspective also, or it's how the narrative is being pushed about. So again, like I think this is also where critical reasoning has to apply. You know, we have to be reasonable. Is, is fighting to the death Yes, it's brave, it's heroic, but what's the use of fighting to the death, like they say to the last Ukrainian, because you'll be fighting to the death and there'll be no Ukrainians left. So who's gonna be up there saying, yay, we won, we won when everybody's dead. Yeah, again, I haven't really understood your question, but to me, it goes back to, why are they saying what they're saying? What are their reasons? Why did they come to that conclusion? What, you mean just the lay people, or you mean like the government? Whoever is saying that. Okay, so the yeah, so it's when I look at it, uh, I can see mainly like the U.S. will be saying that they are winning the government, but maybe because you know there is you know there's always profit in war, but when it comes to the lay people, you know, just as normal people, I think. They are thinking this because they have been fed this narrative from especially mainstream media that Russia is losing, like they are losing in such a bad way. Yet you see Zelensky doing his world tour appearances in countries, begging for armaments, begging for support. Mm. I mean, he approached the African Union and you know, how we, the, we Africa, we were like, nah, we neutral, we staying out of this, fight your own battles, we're not entertaining this. Yeah, well, Africa's the only continent where we we refuse for him to speak to the African Union. Um, but all the other nations, they are going along, most. they are they are yeah, most yeah, they're giving armaments when they know with every 
the weapon you send, you are killing civilians. And not even, civilians, even troops, because those are all young men that are fighting. You're killing yeah. a generation of Ukrainians. <laughs> I see. I see what you are saying, uh, but again, it's not black and white. I wish it was yes, black and white. Yes, it's not. Yeah, I know. This, this, I wish this, it. Yeah. You know, there's too much entanglement. There's it ideologies. There's survival. There is egos blaming. There is history it's, there. It's egos. Yeah, I think the biggest is egos. Because what is yeah, wrong is just... Ukraine is already not a NATO, gonna be a NATO member. That is done. So there's no reason. So that is why uh, Russia moved out of Kiev. Remember, they surrounded Kiev. To, to, to put pressure until Chief said, okay, yeah, we're we not, we we, we shelving our NATO aspiration. Then Russia moved away and then continued on their next aim, which was to free the Donbass, which they're doing now. Now, again, how they, just me as a layman and from what I can read, how they can mm. stop that fighting is mm. all that Kiev has to do is, is say, okay, look, let's again look at the Minsk agreement. Let's see how we can negotiate it again because we know we dishonored it but now we would like to look at it again and then see whether that's all that's all that has to happen you you touched on the minsk agreement and the nato whatever uh, the thing is if you look at the minsk agreement itself and why it has not been fully implemented you come to realize that it's not just the literal meaning of what's written in the agreement there is other layers there there's mm -hmm. lack of trust maybe mm -hmm. and, you know again as a critical reasoning person who are playing this it's difficult to be able to look at the bigger picture yeah bigger context step out of it okay it could be that the contract says this but there could be another reason that is not part of the agreement to say why so and so is furious and so unless you look at the bigger picture you might miss a lot and critical reason requires you to have a bigger picture. And a bigger picture, picture yeah, context. yeah. Yeah, there is, the, there is the literal what's happening there and there is the bigger picture. Okay. Which connects the arguments to eventually say, okay, this is the situation here. And on regards to people dying again, I don't support people dying, people should live their lives, you know, yeah. carry on with their daily lives, you know, there's no justification for that. But again, it is not black and white, unfortunately. In all we are living, some black and white. Some people have their own perspectives on what life should should be like. Yeah, yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Because I can see a lot of Ukrainians saying, "We will rather die than be How? than be oppressed." But which again, I don't understand why they would be oppressed because be. because this. I don't know. I didn't see Russia say anything that they want to take over the country. So that part, I don't understand, but still, but I understand, or not even that they, they, they want to win. They just want to win. It's, they will die because they want to win. Which is very sad, but it's a different culture. So I don't, I don't think I can understand. I, you know, I'm and from again, South Africa. <laughs> and, 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 and I wanna make a point there. Why are they saying it's better if they? Why are they saying that? If we should ask them these questions and make, you know, and make conclusions from why, from their reasoning. So because they are, if people, someone is claiming I'd rather die, that's the claim. Why do you rather die? What are the reasons that they should just probably just that? Maybe, you know, then we, we then we, we we are going to learn from them. I am really all the message I want to make across here is that. When we hear claims, we should look at the reasons behind mm -hmm. these claims. You know, that's yeah, the I think point they're claiming coming. that. And this is they... a principle in reasoning. It's a principle in reasoning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they are claiming that they, they, they don't want to lose or they would rather die is because they don't want to be controlled by Russia. But this is not the people in the Donbass. Because the people in the Donbass want to be under Russia. This is the, the people in the west of Ukraine. But which is not, it doesn't make sense because the whole idea of, of making the, the Luhansk and Donetsk uh, uh, independent has got nothing to do with the other parts of, of, of uh, what is this place, the other parts of Ukraine. Yeah, about 
the thing is that the the it's the people, the Western Ukrainians, which means all those who are not in the Donbas region, they are afraid of being under Russian control. But that is not what the fighting is about. The fighting is about freeing the ones in the East who want to be under Russian control. So there's a kind of Again. A, yeah, it's you know, that's they don't very trust, interesting. It's so, trust. You, you, yeah. so 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 you have your view and they have their view. Their view is lack of trust. Trust, yes, it's a trust issue. Yeah, they don't trust that. It's based on lack of trust. Yes. And 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 yeah. yeah. Because yeah. again, it's like a fallacy because it's slippery slope whereby yes, slippery you assume slope, yeah. it happens and this will happen. Yeah. Yeah. So for them, <laughs> maybe I haven't spoken with them. Maybe they assume if this happens, therefore we'll be under the control of these guys. Have is uh, they jump into co- they jump to conclusion before they even definitely you become anxious yeah. yeah 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 so yes but anyway i just feel sad that so many people are dying and that many more are going to die but that's what can we do <laughs> okay so I think that's it. Unless you want to add anything else about critical things. Um, all I want to say is I would urge people to learn this skill. It's a soft, it's a soft skill. You know, it enhances your hard skill. If you're an accountant and then you have uh, critical reasoning skills, it makes you a better accountant, more about better accountant. If you're an engineer or a police officer, however, uh, once you get, once you, once you learn this skill, then it become, you know, your hard skill is enhanced to become more, much better than how you are before. And once you've learned, like any other skill, you've got to apply these skills in daily life for it to become part of your nature. You know, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an essential skill that people need to, you know, to train themselves to find ways to train this skill and apply it in their daily lives. And I believe once you do so, you'll see you'll see the world differently. Yeah, that's 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 my. Yeah, that's what I urge people to consider. Okay, yeah, because I'm trying very hard yeah. without a teacher, but <laughs> trying, trying. Uh, I will do, I will do yeah. this, and I will do a video where I'm actually applying yeah. what you were saying, yeah. and then just to see, because yeah. you know yeah. we are all lay people, yeah. we all need to learn how to to, to yeah. navigate life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, so- uh, and I want and, and I want uh, uh, and, and before and both before we leave, I want to I'd like to, to say that the, the essence of critical reasoning is to set, you know, true beliefs and false beliefs from making sense. That's, that's the essence of critical reasoning. And we all want to have truth. You mm-hmm. know, it's useful once you have truth. It's more useful when you act on facts, on truth, rather than working on false, you end up, you know, so I would that's, 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 that's the essence of critical reasoning. Yeah. Okay, Rukube, so yeah. thank you so much um, You're welcome. for being with thank us. Thank you as well. <laughs> and uh, hope yeah. to speak to you again. Okay.